During the months of November 2008 through January 2009, the USA Latin Chamber of Commerce interviewed 937 Latino-owned New York City small businesses. The small business owners selected had invested eight or more years in their businesses, improving the physical space and social network needed to make it grow. This had helped them establish themselves as valued assets in neighborhoods in New York City. Close to 40 surveyors interviewed a cross-section of the Hispanic business community, 937 in total, composed of attorneys, accountants, and 67% were mom-and-pop retailers, including supermarkets and restaurants. Most cited increases in operating costs and the economic downturn as the leading cause for laying off employees. 69% had either done so or had plans to do so in the near future. The number one reason cited for why they could fail had to do with the space they were renting. The overwhelming majority, a full three quarters of all Hispanic small business owners surveyed, blamed higher rents and unreasonable lease terms. The picture that emerged was that of a community teetering on the edge, with hopes dimming of sustainability and much less growth. With so much at stake at least renewal time, employees too found themselves living in uncertainty and stress, while word came either yes or no that the business would continue. The business owner must make some tough choices with little leverage on their side. This is where the Small Business Survival Act, intro 847 would come in. Its sponsor, Council Member Robert Jackson, introduced this bill in October 2008 before the New York City Council. The act accomplishes the goal of having both parties negotiate in good faith the new lease terms through a simple three-step process. The first step is direct negotiations between the landlord and tenant to arrive at mutually agreeable terms for the new lease. If this face-to-face negotiation fails to achieve mutual agreement, then an independent mediator is assigned to assist the parties in reaching an agreement. If mediation fails, then an independent arbiter is agreed upon and both parties present their case for the lease terms and the arbiter's decision is final and binding on both parties.